So I have a question. Are you afraid you might be socially awkward? Or do you know you're socially awkward and you're really not sure how to stop this type of behavior? My name is Jared Schoonmaker. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. And in this video, we're gonna highlight what does socially awkward mean, what it looks like, and if you're struggling in this area, some of the things you can do to stop this behavior. I've read a few different definitions on what socially awkward means, and basically they all come up with the same idea, same thought that it's a person who's nervous and who creates embarrassing social situations. Now, in full disclosure, I used to be very socially awkward. I was more of the shy, socially awkward person. I couldn't talk to anybody. Even in crowds, I would kind of clamp up. And I guess to a degree, I probably did make situations or social interactions embarrassing for other people and probably to me to a degree as well. I felt embarrassed because I didn't know what to say. I was always nervous around people and it took a while for me to kind of break out of my shell. A lot of it had to do probably with going into the military, um, you know, in my training in the military, I sort of kind of broke out of my shell. And obviously with different circumstances in your life, things happen and you kind of grow past the person you used to be. So. Would I consider myself fully recovered socially awkward? No, there's situations still now where I'm probably a little bit more on the socially awkward side. So it is a learning process. I'm continually trying to evolve myself as a person. And so I decided to do a video on this because this is something I definitely have battled with. And this is probably something most people deal with at some level. I'm gonna change the definition a little bit because I found that not all socially awkward people are nervous. Some are, some aren't. I've also found that not all socially awkward people are shy. Again, some are, some aren't. Some are introvert, introverts, some aren't. I was probably, I was more of an introvert in the beginning and I kind of switched out into be more of extroverted. You can't just say somebody who's an introvert is socially awkward, nor can you say somebody who's overly loud all the time is confident. That's just, it's, it just doesn't make sense. So you don't want to just look at, oh, this person fits into A, B, and C, ergo, they're socially awkward. Because everybody is different, everybody kind of, kind of creates their own box that they're in. So it definitely becomes a little bit harder to spot and I don't want to try to pigeonhole everybody into if they fall into these categories, then bam, they're socially awkward. That's not what I'm saying here. But what I want to do is give you guys a blueprint that if you fall into this blueprint more than not, then chances are you display some level of social awkwardness and what ultimately you can do with it. Now, before we get into this meat of this video, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, if you like content like this, please like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. You all know that it definitely helps the algorithm, it helps all channels grow, and we're here to help grow. We're here to push this channel to help other people understand social dynamics, understand power dynamics, and how it relates to men in social settings, men in relationships. That's the purpose of this channel. Now with that, let's get into the meat of this. Now the very first attribute that somebody is socially awkward is they typically offend other people. Respecting yourself and others is one of the most basic and important rules of socialization. Socially awkward people don't understand that and they engage in typically one or more of the following. They cut people off, they talk louder so that they can be heard better, they typically hijack conversations, 
they can also make mean jokes or embarrass people to make people cringe. It's kind of like that shock. You ever seen this guy or a girl talking and they say the most outlandish things? That's part of being socially awkward. They don't understand social cues. They also might make politically incorrect jokes that are kind of out of timing. They're very badly placed. Now, there's a time and place for politically incorrect jokes. I make them all the time, and maybe that's part of me being socially awkward, but there's a time and a place for certain types of jokes. And if you don't understand when that time is and when that place is, you're probably socially awkward because you don't understand the social cues. You can also be very verbally threatening and abusive to others. So this is kind of where that dangerous aspect of somebody socially awkward is, especially if, not if you're offending people, but if you're outright threatening verbally other people, this can be very dangerous. This is where escalations happen. This is where fights happen. And so if you're displaying any of these, if somebody's pushing back on you because you have a point of view and you're you're getting offended and you're verbally abusive to them, then you, my friend, are definitely socially awkward and you kind of need to understand and learn internet, interpersonal dynamics. Now, the second thing is they spoil group conversations. And a lot of group conversations, the whole point of group conversations really isn't to create deep meaning, it's really not to push narratives on other people. Group conversations is really about socializing. A lot of it is just about kind of relaxing and just really enjoying the group because you're in a group. And what a lot of people who have social anxiety do is they make the whole group feel or they, the whole group has this thought of this dude is being a complete douchebag. When is he leaving? The whole group has this kind of underlining contract or this invisible conversation that they have with their eyes that the person who is socially awkward just doesn't pick up on. And they all have this silent agreement like, when is this guy leaving? They feel awkward. They feel heavy because of this guy's presence. A socially awkward person in this scenario, in this group setting, typically tries to monopolize all the conversations within the group. They ask very personal questions to people, like how much do you make? Or if maybe there's a new couple in the group, they might just blurt out, have you guys had sex yet? Very personal questions that really aren't their business. They also have a tendency to zero in on one person, making that person feel uncomfortable, and they leave everybody else. This is again in group conversations. The whole point of a group conversation is just to relax, just to socialize. It's not supposed to be deep, meaningful conversations within a group setting. It's only meant to socialize and to relax. And so when a person who is socially awkward is pinpointing one person or making or asking very personal questions, it's bringing the whole group down. We all have a tendency to push back on ideas that kind of run against our own beliefs. And we all have a tendency to kind of want to show off, but most of us can resist and seek to understand and look for commonalities in people. The socially awkward person sees an, as sees always as an opportunity to show off, to show off how superior they are, to show off how much better they are than somebody else, to show off how smarter they are. And the worst kind of socially awkward individuals makes it always about winning rather than socializing. Posturing is another thing a lot of socially awkward people do. And they do it by invalidating other people's point of view just to, again, show off how superior they are. And the one word that they use is the word no. When somebody has a point of view, they use no, and they go right back into hammering their own point of view. 
No is always a conversation stopper and it communicates that you fully disagree with this person and that you know better. So when you start having conversations with people and they're always using no and then they, they have another point of view, understand that this is a socially awkward person. They don't understand the social cues and you're probably best just exiting that conversation and kind of putting a mental check mark that you don't want to deal with this person if you can. Now again, if it's a boss, if it's a superior, if it's a family friend, yeah, sometimes that might be hard to get around, but at least you can understand and, and, and see that this person is socially awkward and they just don't get it. I kind of feel bad when uh, people that are socially awkward and they feel that they're superior, I kind of like, you just don't get it. They, they just don't understand. And so I do have some empathy for them. Now, am I going to back down? Am I going to cowtail to them? No, but I do have some empathy to them for them because they just weren't taught this. Or some traits that they have is that you can visibly see that they're nervous. And because humans have what's called mirror neurons that make us feel what others are feeling, that means we can pick up on other people's nervousness. We can pick up on other people's vibes. Women are really good at this. Their mirror neurons are probably 10x what men's are. And this is why women have that sixth sense or that spidey sense. They can pick up on weird. They can pick up a lot better than guys can on somebody who's socially awkward. And so that they can, they feel more than another guy. So this is really easy for women. So if women are watching this, they get it. They're like, yeah, I can pick up on weird. Probably the final one is they just don't have a lot of emotional intelligence. They believe that winning is always a good social strategy. They fail to realize the obviousness of why routines and pickup lines don't typically work. They don't understand that sometimes people know that need to go deeper and you need to allow this person's space to go a little bit deeper and they get cut right off and they try to spin a conversation more for themselves. They can't read body languages, body language or nonverbal cues. And they typically take somebody's words at face value because they don't know how to read the room. They don't know how to read those social cues. They don't understand where people's personal boundaries lie. And some of them probably lack empathy and don't understand how others feel. And because they don't lack empathy, they don't care how others feel. I know that sounds cold and this is very extreme side of somebody who at lacks social awareness or socially awkward, but those who lack empathy also lack caring. So that's all I got on this guys for social awkwardness. Yes, some people can compound all of this with that lack of confidence and that nervousness, which in turn make other people feel nervous. But if you really want to stop being socially awkward, you have to learn how to increase your emotional intelligence by understanding social dynamics, by understanding power dynamics, and implementing what you learn in real world situations. We can certainly help you out with this. The link to our website's down below. You can book a free coaching call with us to see if we're a good fit. We also have a Zoom platform where we're getting more and more into social dynamics, power dynamics, interpersonal dynamics, interpersonal relationships. All of these, if you can learn these and apply them, will help decrease your social awkwardness. My name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. If you found this video helpful, please hit like and comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. With that, have a great day. We'll talk soon.